Good morning and welcome to the breakfast news on Rajya Sabha Television. My name is Ashwarya Kapoor and here are this morning's headlines. Election Commission cancels a Lok Sabha by polls to Anant Nag says situation not feasible to hold polls now. India vows a retaliation after Pakistani mutilates uh, bodies of two soldiers along the line of control in Punch. Pakistan denies beheading. Big setback for a Nepal Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dehel. A coalition partner decides to withdraw support over impeachment of Chief Justice Sushila Karki. U.S. President Donald Trump says he's willing to meet Kim Jong-un. Development in the backdrop of repeated missile tests by North Korea. And India take on defending champions Australia in the third round-robin league match of the Aslan Shah Cup today. Australia are nine-time winners of the tournament. Top story this morning, Pakistan on Monday mutilated the bodies of two Indian soldiers who were martyred in an unprovoked exchange of fire in the Punch's uh, Krishna Ghati sector of Jammu and Kashmir. Now, the Indian Army has warned that it will deliver a fitting response to the Pakistani Army's action. Army Chief General Bipin Rawat reached to Srinagar in the wake of the beheadings. In a barbaric act, the Pakistani army mutilated bodies of two Indian soldiers who were martyred along the line of control in Jammu and Kashmir's Poonch district. The two were Paramjit Singh and Prem Sagar. They were killed as Pakistan fired rockets at a forward defence location post. Another BSF Jawan was critically injured in the firing. This is a stand-up fire hua hai, uh, from across and uh, from the Rosa and Buttle posts of uh, enemy posts from uh, Pakistan side, uh, which uh, initially three injuries. Hui thi. Dekhe, isko hum, uh, abhi matter under investigation. Hai. Iske bare mein abhi kuch nahi sakte hai ki whether it was an infiltration attempt or uh, what was But mostly, we will say this was a cease for violation, which was a cease for violation, and a constable was injured in BSF. Ka. India vowed an appropriate response to the beheading. Defence Minister Arun Jaitley saying their sacrifice won't go in vain. ऐसी हरकतें तो युद्ध में भी नहीं हुआ करती और निश्चित रूप से शांति में तो कभी नहीं होती। भारत सरकार इसकी घोर निंदा करती है। हमारी सेना और फौज के ऊपर पूरा भरोसा है कि इसकी जो प्रतिक्रिया उनको करनी पड़ेगी वो करेंगे। और जो ये बलिदानी हमारे दो सिपाहियों की है ये व्यर्थ नहीं जाएगी The Indian Army released a press statement saying such despicable acts by the Pakistan Army will be appropriately responded ये गवर्नमेंट नु ते सी की करना वा साडा भ्रा ते वापस होना नहीं ते सानू मान भी है कि देश बदले शहीद होया असी सरकार तो ये मांग करदे पे इना शहीदा दा बदला जेड़ा एक बार मुंह तोड़ जवाब देके जरूर ले आ जाना जिस तरीके से वो लोग किए हैं उसी तरीके से हमारी फौज उनके साथ में उनका भी छत नजर नछत्र करके और सर काट कर कलाए द अटैक टू प्लेस अंडर कवर ऑफ हेवी मोटर फायर अ पाकिस्तानी स्पेशल फोर्सेस टीम स्नीक्ड 250 मीटर्स अक्रॉस द लाइन ऑफ कंट्रोल इनटू द पूंछ सेक्टर एंड बीहेडेड द साबित हो चुका कि पाकिस्तान की टेररिस्ट स्टेट है और फेल स्टेट है और उस डेस्परेशन में वो अपनी प्रेजेंस महसूस करने के लिए और इसको गन को मिलिटेंसी को टेररिज्म को और इस प्रकार के हरकतों को एक इंस्ट्रूमेंट ऑफ डिप्लोमेसी के तौर पर वो यूज कर रहा है जो उसकी बिल्कुल कहना चाहिए बेकुफाना उसकी सोच है और कारणा जिसका जो हरकत है उसका उसको जवाब मिलेगा Pakistani army has however denied mutilating the bodies saying they would never disrespect a soldier opposition parties led by the congress questioned the center's policy on pakistan accusing it of compromising national security mujhe ye to vishwas hai ki army zor zor jawab degi lekin jis tarah se ye vakya ye incidents badhte ja rahe hain pichle 35 mahinon mein lagbhag 199 ke kareeb हमारे जवान मारे गए हैं 
और जो सीस वायर वायलेशन हुए हैं वो एक हजार तीन सौ तैतालीस हुई है देर आर फ्रीक्वेंट वायलेशन ऑफ सीज फायर एंड पाकिस्तान आज बिन डूइंग दिस आई अपील टू द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ पाकिस्तान टू टेक कंट्रोल ऑफ द सिचुएशन एंड रेन इट्स आर्मी not to resort to such ceasefire violations home minister rajnath singh held a high security meeting at his official residence in delhi to review the state of security in kashmir army chief general bipin rawat reached shrinagar on monday and took stock of the security situation bureau report rajya sabha tv More news from Jammu and Kashmir as many as 7 people were killed on monday in an attack on a bank's cash van by Hizbul Mujahideen terrorists in Kashmir's Kulgam district after heavily armed militants so waylaid a cash van of the Jammu and Kashmir bank five police personnel and two bank employees were pulled out and shot at point blank range while four policemen and two bank employees died on the spot the fifth policeman succumbed to his injuries at a hospital later The Hizbul Mujahideen militant outfit which claimed responsibility for the attack said that the militants allegedly fled with the four weapons which were being carried by the guards it is still not clear whether they ran away with any cash ye jo hai inke jo jo terrorist hain ye militant se inki desperation hai क्योंकि जब हमारी तरफ से जब पुलिस की तरफ से सिक्योरिटी फोर्स की तरफ से उन पर दबाव बनाया जा रहा है तो इस प्रकार के जो साफ टारगेट पर ढूंढते हैं और चोरों की तरह आके ऐसे अटैक करते हैं उस अटैक में ये हमारे लोग शहीद हुए हैं लेकिन उनकी कुर्बानी जो है ज़ाया नहीं जाएगी पक्के तौर पर जो टेररिस्ट हैं उनको जो है इसका भुगतना पड़ेगा और उनको जो है उनके साथ उसी तरीके से डील होगा जिस तरीके से उन्होंने जो है इनके साथ किया है And the election commission has cancelled the Anant Nag Lok Sabha by poll. The poll body has said that the situation is not feasible to hold elections right now. The decision came after the Home Ministry on Monday turned down a request by the election commission for additional security forces for the Lok Sabha by poll. The ministry has said it would only spare thirty thousand personnel. The parliamentary seat was to go to polls on 12th of April which were postponed due to violence during the 9th of April polling for the Srinagar Lok Sabha seat in which eight people were killed. Last week the EC had asked the Home Ministry that 740 companies of paramilitary forces be put at its disposal by 12th of May so that a proper deployment of forces could be undertaken. And India and Turkey have strongly condemned the use of uh, double standards in combating terrorism. The two countries have agreed to strengthen cooperation in an effectively dealing with the menace of both bilaterally and at a multilateral fora. And this was conveyed after extensive talks between Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan. India and Turkey signed three agreements in the field of foreign affairs, cultural exchange and telecom. After visiting Turkish President Tayyip Erdogan, held bilateral talks with Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Monday. During the meeting, the two premiers took the stock of political, economic, and cultural engagements. President and I are clear that the strength of our economies presents an enormous opportunity to expand and deepen commercial linkages between our countries. we need to approach the entire landscape of businesses opportunities in a strategic and long term manner as on je sayın başbakanın da ifade ettiği gibi ticaret hacmimizin yaklaşık 6.5 milyar dolarda olması bizim için yeterli bir rakam değildir bizim bunu asgari 10 milyar dolara en kısa zamanda çıkarmamızın Both leaders also urged nations across the world to work together to disrupt terrorist networks and their financing. No intent or goal, no reason or rationale can validate terrorism. The nations of the world therefore need to work as one to disrupt the terrorist networks and their financing and a put to a cross border movement of terrorists shunu altını çizerek ifade etmek isterim 
Türkiye terörle mücadelesinde Hindistan'la tam bir dayanışma içerisindedir. Terör örgütlerinin Earlier in the day, Prime Minister Modi and President Erdogan attended the India-Turkey Business Summit in the capital, where Prime Minister Modi stressed the need for an increase in economic engagement between the two countries. Promising a business-friendly environment, Modi invited Turkish companies to invest in India's infrastructure sector, especially in ports, rail, housing, energy, hydrocarbon, tourism, textiles and auto. Economic cooperation is becoming an important pillar of every bilateral relation. India and Turkey enjoy good economic ties. The growth in our bilateral trade over the years. President Tayyip Erdogan was accorded ceremonial welcome at Rashpati Bhavan. He also visited Rajkhar to pay tributes to Mahatma Gandhi. Erdogan arrived in India on Sunday for a two-day visit, his first foreign visit after winning a controversial referendum on April 16 that further consolidated his power as president. Turkey has an experience in fighting and balancing terrorism in its region and can help India isolate Pakistan on the issue of terrorism. But the real question is whether Turkey can restrain itself in OIC on the issue of Kashmir. Akhile Suman for Rajshava Television with camera person Sudhansu in Delhi. On to some other news, uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi today will hold a review meeting with the Revenue Department to take stock of the anti-black money drive in regard to the tax collected post-note ban. He will also review the steps uh, taken out for the GST rollout. The meeting will uh, discuss the disclosures made in the tax amnesty scheme announced after the scrapping of the old 500,000 rupee notes in November last year. The Revenue Department will present a report card done not only on the black money disclosed and the tax collected because of it, but also the seizure of uh, ill-gotten wealth during uh, searches and raids across the country. An update on the measures being planned by the Tax Department against tax evaders will also be discussed. The Prime Minister is also likely to discuss uh, the goods and services tax, which is expected to be rolled out in the country from 1st of July. Now, while the GST Council has decided on uh, the four-tier tax structure, the crucial uh, fitment of goods and services in the tax bracket is yet to be decided. Let's move on in the bulletin. The much-awaited Real Estate Act came into force on Monday with the promise of protecting the right of uh, consumers. However, only 13 states and union territories have so far notified the rules. Remember, the government has brought in the legislation to protect the home buyers and also encourage genuine private players. India's real estate sector is almost synonymous with inordinate project delays and poor quality of construction. More often than not, states have been half-hearted in their efforts to implement the Real Estate Regulation and Development Act 2016, a year after the central law was officially notified. Only 13 states and union territories, including Uttar Pradesh, Rajasthan, Gujarat, Odisha, Andhra Pradesh, Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh and Bihar have ratified RERA so far. 13 other states and union territories are yet to publish the draft rules. Eight states have been published the draft, but these have not been finalized yet. Meanwhile, Jammu and Kashmir is out of the preview of RERA. Uh, any state which is not implementing RERA uh, immediately, they'll be loser. Why they'll be loser? Ultimately, uh, you know, today it's a, a politics of development. You know, anyone who is not, uh, uh, you know, implementing RERA immediately, uh, they'll be the loser in the long run. This is what uh, we, we can say. So everybody has to come on board. The Act makes it mandatory for all builders to register with the real estate regulator authority before launching or even advertising any project. Developers have been given time until the 31st of July to register. Developers will have to submit as well as upload project details, including approved layout plan, timeline, costs and the sale agreement. Under the Act, builders have to deposit 70% of the collected amount in an escrow account to ensure that money is not diverted from one project to another. Non-compliance will invite up to a maximum imprisonment of three years or fine up to 10% of the total project cost.
अब लोग तो परेशान है इस चीज़ के लिए कोविड मिलेगा बिल्डरों पर लगाम लगेगी आज दूसरा प्रोजेक्ट नया शुरू करके अपना पहला प्रोजेक्ट खत्म करें और पार्टियों को अपना हैंड करें The government described the implementation of the Consumer Centric Act as a new beginning where buyers would be king. Even the ongoing projects which have not received completion certificate they should re register it within 3 months. My aur bhi samay de raha hu 3 mahine ke liye. The Indian real estate sector involves over 76000 companies across the country. Over 2300 real estate projects were being developed at the end of December 2016 and at least 40% of the projects were facing delays of about 3 to 4 years. Kriti Mishra's report for Rajya Sabha TV. Meanwhile expressing concerns over the part of states to be played in the implementation of the Real Estate Act now Union Minister Venkaiya Naidu has asked the chief ministers to soon notify the rules under the Real Estate Act. The minister also expressed a deep concern over reports that some states and union territories have diluted the key provisions of the act. In his letter to the chief ministers, uh, Venkaiya Naidu said that the act of parliament has a certain inviolable sanctity and uh, there can uh, be no such dilution of uh, the provisions of the act and the spirit of the act. He said it is a matter of concern that the real estate rules have so far notified only in the respect of 13 states and union territories. Now Venkai Naidu has also asked the states to set up a regulatory authority and the appellate tribunal tribunal under the act the minister said no new projects can be offered by the developers to buyers without their registration with the regulatory authority the real estate regulation and development bill 2016 remember was passed by parliament in march last year and all the 92 sections of the act have come into effect from monday Well, time for a very short break here we'll be right back with more news stay tuned it was an evm lehar not modi lehar i think insult to the people of uh, the country why does the secular lobby say that the nationalism which is projected by bjp is a pseudo nationalism we after so many years don't need any certificate from any lobby BJP is becoming bigger than RSS or RSS is overshadowing BJP I don't think so that uh, uh, BJP can ever become uh, bigger than RSS Watch to the point with Union Minister Dr Harsh only on Rajya Sabha Television Welcome back uh, news from Uttar Pradesh well after its humiliating defeat in the assembly elections now the Congress has decided to break its alliance with the Samajwadi Party and go solo in the local body polls in Uttar Pradesh in addition to this uh, the top leaders uh, leadership has also kicked off with a much awaited reshuffle in uh, party ranks here is a report by RSTV's Vishal Dehia less than 2 months after losing the electoral battle in Uttar Pradesh the congress has decided to call off its alliance with the samajwadi party and contest the local body polls on its own स्थानीय चुनाव है ये अकेले लड़ना चाहते हैं और हम अकेले लड़ रहे हैं ऐसा जो है सभी साथियों का मानना है और हमारे नेतृत्व के बीच में भी हमारे साथियों ने बात कही दूसरी बात एक मेयर का और जो चुनाव जो होता है वो चौदह मेयर हैं जैसे वो ढाई से तीन जो है असेंबली सीट होती हैं विधानसभा का क्षेत्र होता है उसके अंदर किसी तरह की अंडरस्टैंडिंग जो पहले भी होती आई हैं अभी भी होंगी वो अंडरस्टैंडिंग किस लेवल पे होती है वो प्र, वो जो है प्रदेश के लेवल पर नहीं होती हैं वो जिले और शहर के लेवल पर होती हैं जिसमें चेयरमैनी के चुनाव हैं जिसमें मेयर के चुनाव हैं तो ये चुनाव जो है जिसमें अध्यक्ष का चुनाव है नगर अध्यक्ष के जो चुनाव तो ये तमाम चीज़ों को जो है ये पूरी तरह से छूट है शहर की और जिले की इकाइयों को This is not the only change the Congress has affected after its poll debacle in UP and Uttarakhand and its failure to form the governments in Goa and Manipur. Over the past one week, several top leaders have been relieved of their responsibilities in the party organization. They include General Secretary Digvijay Singh, who has been removed as the party in charge of Goa and Karnataka. K C Venu Gopal has taken charge of Karnataka, while Goa will be looked after by A Chella Kumar. Ashok Gehlot has replaced Gurudas Kamat as the in charge of Gujarat. Another general secretary, Madhusudan Mistri, has been transferred from the powerful Central Election Committee to the Central Election Authority that will oversee organizational polls. 
According to sources, these changes are unlikely to be a one-time exercise with pole-bound states now getting attention. There is a strong buzz about the imminent change of precedence of some state units as well. With the organization polls of the Congress all set to be over by October end, it seems Rahul Gandhi, who is expected to take over as party president, has started the effort to give shape to his team. Vishal Daya's report for Rajya Sabha TV. Now look at the events uh, that are likely to make news through the day in the day ahead. Amid worsening of law and order situation in Jammu and Kashmir, Governor N.N. Vora is scheduled to meet Union Home Minister Rajnath Singh today to discuss the future course of action. The Governor may also call on Prime Minister Narendra Modi to apprise him about the situation in the state. In the latest incident of attacks from Pakistan, the mutilated bodies of two soldiers were found in Jammu and Kashmir along the line of control. BJP's national president Amit Shah will today address the newly elected councillors of the party in the three municipal corporations in the national capital. Apart from the 181 councillors, the party candidates who lost in the recent municipal elections and the assembly polls in 2015, former councillors and MLAs, state office bearers, district in charges, and party leaders from outside Delhi who were appointed to supervise the municipal elections will also attend the meet. Defence Minister Arun Jaitley is expected to address a Naval Commander's four-day conference today. Chief of Naval Staff Admiral Sunil Lama will re review the major operational training and administrative activities undertaken in the last six months by the Indian Navy during the conference. The meet will also deliberate upon important initiatives that the Indian Navy is planning for the future. Big story from Nepal. In a major blow to Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dehel, its coalition partner, the Rashtriya Prajatantra Party or the RPP, has decided to withdraw its support from the government over the impeachment motion registered against Chief Justice Sushila Karki. Well, after a meeting of the Central Committee, the party said that it was pulling out of the government in protest of the impeachment motion, which it said was immature and irresponsible and that it was moved with an ill intention. Now, the RPP is the fourth largest party in the coalition government with 37 lawmakers in the 593-member parliament. The government is not in a crisis right now, but could be reduced to a minority if another coalition partner decides to pull out its support. We're saying that the impeachment motion is likely to leave a long-lasting and negative impact in the overall situation in the country. The RPP has asked for immediate withdrawal of the impeachment motion in order to prevent the country from instability and crisis. The impeachment motion against Karki was registered on Sunday after she was accused of delivering biased verdicts and also interfering in the executive's jurisdiction. On to the other top international story now. Well, in the backdrop of rising tensions with North Korea, well, U.S. President Donald Trump on Monday said that it would be willing uh, that he would be willing, uh, willing to meet uh, with the leader Kim Jong Un under the right circumstances. Now, Trump said that he would be honored to meet the North Korean leader. The statement uh, assumes a significance as uh, no U.S. president has ever before met with the leader of North Korea. However, later the White House said that the U.S. would first uh, need to see changes in the North Korean behavior before a potential sit-down. The developments come as uh, North Korea carried out repeated missile tests in recent months and is also threatening to conduct its sixth nuclear test. In response, the U.S. has been carrying out military exercises in the region with South Korea. The U.S. also began installing a controversial anti-missile system THAAD in South Korea last week, which has now become operational. Now, the system's deployment is to defend against a North Korean missile threat. Just to clarify on North Korea, were those conditions that you laid out um, early to the earlier question, would, are those the conditions that would have to be met before there was any meeting, i.e. that North Korea would have to agree to totally uh, disarm its nuclear program, stop threatening their neighbors? Are those the conditions? I think those are some of the conditions. There's going to be a whole host of ones uh, that we determine, that the State Department determines in consultation with the President that have to be met. As I mentioned, we are so early into this process. Uh, that I don't see this happening anytime soon. But I think that, as the President, like I said, under the right circumstances, those circumstances aren't present today, uh, and there would have to be significant change for that to even be a possibility. 
More news uh, from around the globe in World Wrap. India has uh, gifted nearly 50 vehicles worth 90 million Nepali rupees to Nepal for the 14th of May local polls. The elections are the first to be held in the country in over two decades. The handover took place uh, days after Prime Minister Narendra Modi in a telephonic conversation with his Nepali counterpart, Pushpa Kamal Dehal, had expressed India's commitment to the smooth conduct of the polls. France's presidential frontrunner Emmanuel Macron and his rival Marine Le Pen attacked each other's vis visions of France against a background of May Day rallies. Macron painted Le Pen as an extremist, while she portrayed him as a clone of unpopular outgoing President François Hollande. The latest opinion poll shows that Macron was leading Le Pen by 61% to 39% ahead of Sunday's election. The Palestinian militant group Hamas, which rules Gaza, has published a new policy document. This is the first document since its founding charter. It declares for the first time a willingness to accept an interim Palestinian state with the pre-1967 boundaries without recognizing Israel. The text is seen as an effort by Hamas to soften its image. However, Israel says Hamas was attempting to fool the world with the document. The UN says a total of 309 civilians were killed during the month of April due to violence, terrorism and armed conflicts across Iraq. The agency says Islamic State terrorists have detonated car bombs in residential neighbourhoods in Mosul and attacked civilians desperately fleeing the fighting as the security forces liberate more territory from the terrorists. They have also struck in liberated areas where people are trying to rebuild their lives using bombers. And sports news now, top seed Vikas Krishnan in the 75-kilogram category and Gaurav Biduri in the 56-kilogram category advanced to the quarterfinals, giving India a good start at the Asian Boxing Championships on Monday. Vikas Krishnan took uh, barely a couple of minutes to, to book his uh, quarterfinal uh, berth. He sailed uh, past after his uh, Thailand opponent uh, sustained a cut above his uh, left eye just over a minute into the opening round. The bout was halted twice before the referee decided to stop the contest in favour of Vikas. While Gaurav Viduri also defeated a Thai in his first contest, going past Yutapong Tongadi in a points decision. Gaurav now prepares for a tough bout as he's placed against a second seat, Jaiwi Hang of China. The tournament is a qualifier for the August-September World Championships in Hamburg, Germany this year. And steered by an impressive start, a confident India aimed to take their performance a notch higher against defending champions Australia in the third round-robin league encounter of the Sultan Aslan Shah hockey tournament today. After being held to a two-all draw by Great Britain, Indian strikers uh, produced a better performance in the 3-0 victory over New Zealand, who had earlier held the world champions Australia to a one-all draw in the first fixture. Using the tournament to fine-tune their squad after the induction of uh, several youngsters, Australia gave an exhibition of their powerful game by outplaying host Malaysia 6-1 on Monday. In world number 6, India are expected to earn a title showdown with Australia, who are the nine-time winners of the Sultan Aslan Shah Cup. And they've been uh, ranked second in the world after their disappointing show in the 2016 Olympics. Well, that's it from me and my team in this edition of Breakfast News. Thanks for watching. Have a great day ahead.